these are always super fun. Brings me back to my my days uh, back when I was at Moz. Of course, now I have this new company, Spark Toro, and yep. uh, and Spark Toro has been doing some interesting research, which uh, which you and I have gone through together, and which we're going to be presenting on today. So I'm I'm thrilled to get started. Yes, I'm thrilled to get started too. And I just want to mention briefly that. This is just a sample of some of the awesome research that Spark Toro has done. There's a lot of other really awesome stuff too. And I'll give you the free plug that you didn't ask for. You need to check them out. Uh, very awesome things that you're doing there at Spark Toro, Ren. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I actually, I have some, some new data coming uh, perhaps later this week or next week too uh, with the Q3 numbers on Google's click-through rates and some analysis of the Google Jobs widget after they got more aggressive with that. So, yep, stay tuned. Awesome. So, uh, I mean, today we're going to start by talking about this latest ranking factor survey that you did. Um, but why don't I let you talk about that and we can push the first uh, slide live uh, and you can introduce the uh, whole thing to the audience. Great. Yes. Uh, so basic story here is that in August of this year, so just a couple of months ago, uh, we, you know, Casey and myself basically uh, launched a survey of Google ranking factors. And this is this is something that for those of you who've been in the search and SEO world for a while, web marketing world for a while, you might recall that when I was back at Moz, I started doing these all the way back in 2005. And every two years, I would do them again. So 2007, there was an addition, 2009, 2011, 2013, 2015. And then there was nothing in 2017. I was a little disappointed. I was kind of like, come on, Moz, let's let's do another one. Um, but it didn't end up happening. And so when I left Moz and started Spark Toro, I decided, hey, if Moz isn't going to do it, I'll, I'll do it myself. Uh, and so that is what happened here, essentially collected primarily through uh, email, through LinkedIn, and through Twitter shares. Uh, these 1,584 professionals in the search marketing space uh, contributed to this survey. It, they are global respondents, although 70, 80% are in the US, UK, and Canada. Uh, so mostly English language speaking folks. Uh, and they were surveyed in on two variants. One was what factors they believed Google was using and weighting and how heavily. And then also, which we'll, we'll discuss a little later in this webinar, uh, their opinions on Google's representatives public statements about what was and wasn't used by Google systems. So there's there's two things we're looking at here and comparing them is a fascinating study in the opinions of the SEO world. That is essentially, what do you believe uh, Google is using to rank? And what do you think of what Google says about what they're using to rank? So yes, here you go. The Google public statements uh, opinion survey, which same survey uh, published at different times. You can find the full results on SparkToro, but uh, we're gonna be deep diving into some areas and, and cutting the data in some interesting ways. So let's, uh, let's get into that. Yeah, no, sounds yeah. good. In fact, we're going to go through 10 of those things that we talked about. And the first one was really, and now I'm going to put on my glasses to make sure I can read the question appropriately. Um, but in any case, we asked, or you asked rather, uh, how much weight does web page load speed uh, receive in organic ranking? So let's actually look at what those results were. Um, and the, the reason why I wanted to highlight this question, Rand, is it looked to be Look, we've got a 6.8 average reading uh, rating there, uh, which is a pretty high rating. It says that Very people, it, yes, so people really believe that web page load speed is a significant factor in ranking. If that's the case, why do they do so little about it? <laughs> okay, so it's interesting. So you, your perspective is why do they do so little about it? My perspective is, boy, I see a lot of slow loading sites do real well in search results. I'm I and, agree. And I, right. And Google's public statements around this have not matched this idea that it is hugely important. Uh, I have seen, you know, Google Googlers say like, oh, yeah, you know, we're, we're introducing it as a light ranking factor. It's a small ranking factor. Yeah, we use it. We care about it. Right. You should try and make your your sites and pages load fast. But um, I, I was shocked by this result. I think I personally rated it a two or a three. I think and, I was probably in the same place in, in terms of rating because I, I've, I've always bought into the idea that that it was a ranking factor only if you were abysmally slow, 
which is what Google has said about it. And the simple rationale for that is if you are by far the most relevant content uh, for something, that still counts more for the, than anything else, uh, like a factor like page speed. So if I want something from a particular, let, take a navigational search, for example, you obviously would have to show the, the relevant search for that. But the, the relevance matters so much more than everything else, and we just need to get used to that. Yeah, I also think a lot of it is indirect, right? So web page yeah. load speed is something that predicts that people will come back to you again, that they'll link to you more, that they're more likely to enjoy their user experience, that they have a positive experience, that they're more likely to share you. So I think all these things are interconnected. And this is one of the, you know, gets to the fundamental point of studying what Google actually does and studying what works to rank web pages in Google are two different practices. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that in the search world. Yes, indeed. So that's a, a, a good start to our session. But why don't we take a look at the next question and see what that one was about. So this was another interesting one to me. And that's about keyword use in the URL and you know how much weight that uh, Google places on that. So let's take a quick look at uh, what the answers were for that. So, that came in in around 5.2, which was a, an interesting result, too. I mean, that's kind of middle of the road, but it means that there's a, a number of people that consider it to be a strong or even very strong ranking factor. Yeah, this one is the most bell curvy of the yes. uh, of the ranking factors. So, so you essentially have a bunch of people who are clustered in the middle, right, four, five, six. Uh, and then you have kind of these you know, outliers on the edge, people who are sure it's nothing at all, uh, zero meaning not used, and 10 meaning he very heavily used all the time. Um, again, this is one of the ones where I personally was surprised. I, th I expected to see it much lower, uh, much yeah. lower in the rankings. And uh, I think that there's a holdover or a hangover belief set from kind of a prior era in the SEO world, and I think I think we see that we don't experience it. Those of us on the cutting edge of SEO don't experience how much information from 2005 to 2015 is still floating around in the consciousness of web marketers and uh, failing to recognize that, failing to understand that you know it's our job to sort of educate the field past that era is critically important. And I I think keyword use in the URL is one of those ones where. I think, are we getting some background noise from Cindy and the folks? Uh, so maybe we should meet yeah. them. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. In fact, one of the pieces of advice I like to give uh, Rander when people ask me about doing, um, uh, you know, changing their site around or changing the URLs on their site to get keywords in the in the URL, I say don't do it. The downside okay. of changing all the URLs, you know, outweighs the uh, um, the, any tangible, what I perceive to be maybe tiny benefit. Okay, Eric. Well, one one counterpoint for you. What do you what do you think about the the way that Google is displaying the URLs now on mobile and in desktop results, where essentially they uh, appear to show kind of these categories and subcategories, and it looks like um, those present sort of a a, a nudge, right? To to, to suggest like, hey, maybe you should click this result instead of this other one. Do you think that's still existing? Do you think that biases user behavior? Um, so I do think that the presence of those would bias user behavior somewhat. And obviously, Google's testing it. Um, so we'll have to see uh, you know, how that goes for them in the long run. But I noted that the other day, too. It's just uh, I, I have had this. This is not, I don't want to say it's a conspiracy theory, right? But I have this, I have this theory. Google says like, oh, the way we try to present results is so that your, um, you know, click-through rate, so that we maximize the click-through rate of websites, right? That people right. find the answers they want, they click on them. And, and I kind of don't believe that because the data shows that zero-click searches have risen so dramatically, right? And, and Google has basically... Um, killed off so many clicks by presenting information just right in the SERP so that people don't need to click. Uh, and, and so I wonder to what extent the, 
the algorithms are designed to make the visualization and the data presented provide searchers with the information they need without having to click versus optimizing to actually get clicks. You know, on the ad side, I get that Google has an incentive, but on the organic side, they kind of have a reverse incentive. And so I'm, I'm skeptical. Right. right. Yeah, well, I, 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 I hear you. Uh, I just also mindful that Google has to be very careful about how they manage the satisfaction of their users. And I suspect that they're balancing what they keep on site with when they send people off site. I think that I think that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. So should we look at the next question? I think yeah, you're going to yeah, drive this good. one. I like this one too. All right. So uh, so the question here was, in your opinion, how much weight does anchor text of links pointing to the specific ranking page uh, impact the the Google res results? So this is this is a classic ranking factor, right? I point a bunch of anchor text with my keyword at the page I want to rank. Am I going to be able to boost it? And you know, for 20 years that you and I were in this industry, right, 97 to 2017, this was the ranking factor, right? You could basically just count on the fact that if you got five, 10 more links with exact match anchor text from good sites pointing to yours, you were going to rank better. Um, and you could test this you know, a million ways from Sunday and see it just work every time. In the last few years, I have heard that SEOs are generally uh, a, little, a little more divided on this. And if we look at the, um, sorry, can we pull back up the, the distribution there? Yeah, if we look at that distribution, right, you can see that there's still, uh, it is a strong average rating, but it's, it's not even as high as web page load speed, right? And you know, if you took if you took the ranking factor survey in 2005 up to 2017, this was if not number one, number two or three in the ranking factors. Now it's in I think it's number seven or eight. So it has fallen dramatically in the eyes of professional SEOs. Yeah, it absolutely has. And by the way, I'm in the camp of those who believe that it matters a lot less than it used to. Um, we have seen people do very well with strong um, link profiles that weren't anchor text rich, um, and we've seen that many, many times. But I, I'm not saying it's not a ranking factor at all. Right. Uh, I what think they're just how they look at it. So obviously, for these 20 years that it was super important, Google, you know, obviously relied on it. They they needed it. They used it heavily. What do you think they have replaced this with? Like, what what is the, what is the data that they're getting now that they're able to say, hey, we don't need we don't need to rely on anchor text exact match as much anymore because we have. Well, so I, I can tell you what I hope they've replaced it with. Um, <laughs> isn't necessarily what they have replaced it with, but maybe the uh, the relevance in the context of the link a little more broadly. Um, that would be a nice thought. At least, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think I generally agree. I think that they're. I think that they've gotten way smarter. So that if you go to, you know, if you're trying to rank a page about, um, uh, you know, Italian cooking, and you go to a bunch of pharmaceutical websites and put Italian cooking in the anchor text, Google just is not going to care about that like they used to because they can see that the page and the website has nothing to do with it, um, right? And that there, there's no, there's no relevance, no connection there. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, maybe we should look at the next question. Yeah. All right, that's yours again. In your opinion, how much weight does accuracy of content, this is an interesting one because we're going to actually come back to this uh, in a future one, but, but we'll talk here just about the opinions of, of SEOs. In your opinion, how much weight does accuracy of content receive in Google's ranking systems? Let's, let's take a look at the distribution. Oh, right, before the... <laughs> Before we do that, a statement, a public statement from Danny Sullivan, who uh, many of you might know, he used to run Search Engine Land and Third Door Media and then was hired by Google as their sort of internal search liaison, um, which I'm very sad about because I loved his voice as a Google critic, but uh, he certainly provides some interesting information from inside of Google as well. So he says, machines cannot tell the accuracy of content. Instead, our systems rely on signals we find that align with relevancy of topic and authority. So th this first sentence, Eric, I just want you to rate the truthfulness for me of the <laughs> first sentence from Danny here. Machines cannot tell the accuracy of content. 
Well, let me um, try a sample question for you. You can tell me whether a machine could tell the answer. Um, the capital of Washington State is Seattle. That's false, Doesn't... and I believe every machine could tell you that. <laughs> but so, so clearly there's some lines where they can tell the accuracy and I, others where they can't, right? I mean, I find this, I find this so... Str such a strange statement from Danny, right? Because I think that in, it, historically he's always been very um, concerned with perception and and sort of you know the accuracy of his own statements. And so I found this one very odd. Uh, however, let's take a look at the distribution. All right. Well, uh, SEOs obviously, unlike Danny Sullivan, believe that Google can not only rate the accuracy of content, but they believe it is extremely important. This was one of our top five, top five ranking factors uh, in the 2019 survey. All right, so uh, that's, uh, that's great. Let's take a look at the next question. So for this one, what we really want to find out is, in your opinion, how much weight does the total amount of the content on the page receive in Google's organic ranking system? This is a fascinating question too. Um, so it is kind of a middle of the road score, but that means there's a lot of people that believe that the volume of content actually matters. Um, and I, I find I this think, one fascinating too. Yeah, I mean, I think this is another example of correlation causation problem, right? Where it is absolutely the case that you can see that more content correlates with higher rankings, right? With more page one and top of page one rankings. No, no doubt about it. Every correlation study that's ever been done in Google's rankings in the last five years has shown more content. But I, I think what's hard to know is, is that cause or is that merely uh, correlation? And, and I tend to think it's more correlation. I don't think Google actually gives two poops about how much content is on the page. I think they only care that it solves the searcher's problem. And for in-depth queries, many in-depth queries, there, there is quite a bit of content required to solve the searcher's problem. But right. Not and, and, but I, I, I believe that uh, what's maybe at the heart of this, too, is um, if we think about what Google needs to do, and you go back to a good part of what makes them successful is the satisfaction level they maintain with their users, in-depth answers to questions are often what users are looking for. Uh, even though there's a strong culture out there that says less is more and sound bites and snackable content, which I think is all BS, um, personally. Um, but I mean, there's a time and a place for me. Don't get me wrong. But um, and it's called Twitter. <laughs> yes, that's where you get the snackable content. So uh, you know, I think there's there's an underlying element of truth to this, but. You can't turn that into you need at least 250 words on every page. Uh, yeah, this one was a little disappointing for me. To be totally honest, I would have loved to see SEOs say, uh, no, it's obviously not a ranking factor on its own, even if it's correlated. And maybe yeah. maybe as people get more sophisticated around this subject, we'll see that in, in the years ahead. Yeah. Uh, so our next question. All right. Is that one for me or for you? Oh, it's me again. Um, so. This is another fascinating one. In your opinion, how much weight does the presence of external link, links in the page's content uh, receive as a Google ranking factor? It's like, okay, linking out is a positive for ranking, this is what this question is about. Right, right. 4.7, which, you know, slightly less than average, oh. obviously. That is, but, that is quite low. Yes. Yeah. But I think that's in our, our bottom five or six. Right, but on the other hand, with all I, I can tell you, if I look at this distribution, this is not equal to the distribution of people who actively link out from their content. <laughs> I mean, I hope I think what's interesting, right, is I hope everyone links out from their content because I believe that it is uh, similar to load speed, similar to uh, uh, amount of content on a page. It has a strong correlation with ranking well. Because when you link out, uh, not only does that, I do believe it is a ranking factor, although a small one, uh, but I also think it shows the rest of the web that you are a good participant in the ecosystem and that tends to come back to you. 
right? Yeah. Just as networking and building up friendships and relationships in your industry can have a positive impact on your career and almost always does, so too does building up relationships with the rest of the web, especially in your own ecosystem uh, and, and showing that through external linking. I, I agree completely that it's a, a really smart thing to do. And I think it helps searchers solve their problems, to your point earlier. Yes. Yeah, if you so provide the answer. Is, is right there. Right, absolutely. All right, let's take a look at the next one. These are kind of paired up, which is what I find interesting, the next two questions. But in your opinion, how much weight does the use of Google AMP web component framework receive in Google's organic ranking uh, systems. So let's let's go ahead and look at the answer. Um, and this is another one of those industry so contradictions. Like even distribution, right? Basically, yeah. you just get very, very even across the board. This is one where there's incredible disagreement. Uh, it, it's true. And uh, but but you know you've heard me say this on two other questions so far. If this is really the distribution of people who believe that uh, AMP is important to ranking, then how come half the websites on the web aren't in AMP? I mean, I reject <laughs> it for philosophical reasons. Uh, well, OK. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yes, I, I agree with you. I think that, um, well, let, let's move on to the next question. I think that'll, that'll actually answer. Yeah, yeah so we're, they're tied together. So go for it. Let's see the next question. All right, so this is this, this one we, we're getting, we're moving into the how do you feel about Google's public statements. Here's the public statement from John Mueller, who, who works at Google, uh, I think as a, a search or webmaster uh, trends analyst. analyst. And, uh, and, and John says, AMP isn't a ranking factor. If you decide to disable it, make sure to redirect appropriately. I agree with the last part. I don't know about the first part, but how truthful do you rate this statement? And here, uh, here's the distribution. So first off, it's a zero to four scale, which could be a little awkward for some folks. Zero is, I believe this is provably false. I can prove that AMP is a ranking factor. And four is, this is 100% uh, transparent and correct. And then two is, uh, I use the acronym TCBM, but all the raters saw what it actually said, which is technically correct, but misleading. So that is where most of the answers came in here. Uh, technically correct, but misleading is what most SEOs believe. And then you can see there's almost exactly the same number who say it's provably false versus those who say it's 100% correct. Yeah, no, it's fascinating uh, to see this distribution uh, here too. And I think part of what people are pointing at is, of course, if you're a news site and you get in the top news or top stories carousel, um, yeah, for those sites, it's clearly a ranking factor. Uh, but you know, which, outside which of that, it really bothers me, right? It really bothers me that John Mueller, who should be a responsible person, who right, who, who presents accurate and transparent information, I think that you know that's his job. That that's how he's sort of judged, right? That he would not, that he would exclude that critical information when he's making these statements. And he he didn't follow up. He didn't correct it when he was confronted about it, right? All the replies say like, "What about Google News?" And there's no reply from him. It's frustrating, right? It, it makes you, I think it, it causes less trust to be in Google's reps. I, I wish that wasn't the case. That frustrates me a lot. Let's take a look at one of the Google News results here. There you go. Yeah. I yeah. see, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four AMP results. One, two, three, four AMP results. One, two, three, four AMP results. Basically, there's nothing but AMP. Right. Because you, and cannot, you cannot appear in these types of results, literally cannot, in these types of results, unless you're AMP. So now, now just to, uh, and, and by the way, I agree that it would have been great if John clarified it. So, but, but I will say is outside of the world of news sites and getting into these kinds of results, um, I, I don't see any real evidence of uh, AMP being uh, a ranking factor for what I'll call the rest of us. But you know these contextual nuances are really important in communication. There's yeah, no, really. Uh, there, yeah, there's no really important to maintain accurate communication. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. Yeah. yeah. How truthful do you rate this statement? Again, this is uh, from from the same person at Google, uh, John Mueller. Uh, there's no such thing as LSI keywords. Anyone who's telling you otherwise is mistaken. Sorry. Um, here's the results. Most people, again, believe technically correct, but, but misleading. This one, I have a little bit of forgiveness for. I think that 
when John is speaking about this in the context of does Google use latent semantic in indexing, the, the old school technique from like the late 1990s uh, for their particular you know, analysis of words at Google, no, they don't. Is there such a thing as LSI keywords? Yes, yes, there is, right? If I, <laughs> if I Google what's an LSI keyword, Google won't, the results won't all say there's no such thing as that, right? Um, so a little bit, okay, it's technically correct but misleading, but we can forgive John, I think, in this case, because in my opinion, at least, I don't know about yours, but I, I don't think Google uses this at all. Well, so maybe, maybe TCVM isn't right. Maybe it's technically incorrect, but underlying truthful. <laughs> I should have I should have surveyed for that too. I should have surveyed for that too. Uh, what is what I find interesting here is a lot of people. More people have said this was uh, provably false than 100% correct, and I believe that is because many folks have seen uh, tools and case studies and have tried it themselves, where they have basically gone and found related words and phrases, maybe even using the LSI uh, protocol or system. They've included those words and phrases on their pages, and they've seen rankings boosts. And that yes. is, uh, yeah, that's pretty stuff, right? So I, I agree that sometimes, even when you're not using the system Google uses, you can still get positive results out of it. I think there's just some more sophistication that has to go on there. All right. Shall we take a look at uh, the next one? Yes. And this is our... <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I this is our one. final one. Yeah, this is a great Ooh, one. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Uh, all right. How truthful do you rate Google's statement? We don't have anything like a website authority score. Uh, so let's let's look at the uh, evidence here. Survey said. Sur oh wait, <laughs> you got to see. Before before we look at that, I just yeah, okay. want to point out, right? So this statement was made uh, uh, officially by Google. I think it was made by Gary Gilovich. Ish, ish, uh, uh, and uh, and then just a few months later, the Guardian uh, wrote an article where they where they uh, cited uh, Pandu Nuyak, Nayak, uh, who who's been at Google for 14 years. He works as a search engineer, uh, and so he says, in order to address this, we have developed algorithms that recognize a bad event is taking place, and we should increase our notions of authority increase the weight of authority in our rankings so that we surface high quality content rather than misinformation in this critical time here. Which sounds like this search engineer who works at Google is literally telling the Guardian's reporter, we, are, we have a concept of website authority and we are increasing its weight in our rankings. So maybe SEOs can be forgiven for <laughs> not believing the Google statement <laughs> at all. Right? This, was, this is our least, believed, our least believed statement where most, most SEOs looked at that and said, that is a pile of trash and we don't believe you one bit. Um, well, interestingly enough, there was another statement when they were talking about visual search where they made a reference to the authority of the web page having to do with whether an image would be picked uh, in a visual search context. So the, the statements have come out that sort of contradict this other statement. Yeah. Um, so this is one of those things where uh, I do think a lot of the time, and this is where your uh, true but uh, misleading uh, context is a really good one that you uh, uh, put in the, the survey is that, okay, maybe since we all associated this like purely with link score, page rank, okay, maybe that association isn't the way right. we all think of it. and. Or maybe, um, it's, maybe it's not a single website authority score, right? Maybe there are multiple algorithmic elements that combine to suggest something is more authoritative than something else, right? And that, uh, that could make it such that, that um, the statement is technically accurate. What I don't love about this statement is it doesn't say we don't have a website authority score. It says we don't have anything like a website authority <laughs> score, which suggests Right. There is no concept at all inside Google of rating websites on their authority. And that um, that feels very, I don't want to say misleading, it just feels like a direct lie. Um, which, again, I think this, this sort of hurts credibility. And you can see SEOs kind of uh, believing that too. So let's, uh, let's, let's move on and, and, and um, 
wrap up here. We're going to get to some Q and A as well. Uh, my, you know, my my closing thoughts on this, and Eric, I'd love yours as well. But my closing thoughts on this are: I think that in many cases, paying attention to Google statements is wise and can have um, uh, it can have interesting value, right? Like we we as marketers can derive interesting value from them, but we can't take them at face value and we shouldn't take them uncritically. And I think it pays to look at how the field distributes their answers and to see how disparate web marketers are in their beliefs about what causes rankings, what Google statement, whether Google statements are true or not. Uh, I find that information fascinating. I think that suggests to both marketers and anyone who uses marketer services uh, that there is a huge delta in our field uh, in terms of what people think and how they think it works. Yeah, and I, I think that when when we look at the John Mueller statement, for example, about uh, AMP as a ranking factor, um, you know, there's, a, I believe, this internal culture thing at Google where what people are allowed to say and not say is constrained and maybe someone makes a public statement uh, and some um, a hornet's desk gets stored up around, uh, stirred up around that. And I do think there are times when they get told, you know, let it die down rather than sure, sure. actively addressing it. And, and I, I do think Google would be better served with, you know, just clarifying these kinds of things. So I agree with you there. But the other well, thing I, I, I also think, I, I worry a little bit, you know, if I were, if I were a PR person giving advice or if I were a manager right on the, uh, on the Google representative team, the advice I would be giving to my team, my employees would be, hey, it's okay to say, I'm sorry, but we don't reveal that information. And that's a statement you almost never see from Google anymore, right? Since the Matt Cutts era, when Matt would say that frequently, like, well, I know the answer, but I can't tell you. Um, and I think, I think we could return to that. I think it would be absolutely fine and fair to say, hey, that's a great question. Right. Uh, it's not something that I'm authorized to give out. The, the other thing I want people to think about a little bit too, while I agree with you saying not to uh, uh, place too much weight or be over literal in how you interpret what Google says, there's times where understanding that they are, in many cases, very literal about how they're applying the terms is really important. And that's understanding that landscape can be critical in how you get the most value from Google statements. So a classic example is when Google said that we don't use bounce rate as a ranking factor. And I remember Matt Cutts going on this long rant at SMX Advanced about bounce rate. And he concluded it. And it was actually a question from the audience. Do you use bounce rate as an answering uh, a ranking factor? You would do it all the long rant. And then he finished. So in conclusion, we don't use Google Analytics bounce rate as a ranking factor. Right. <laughs> OK. That wasn't that's, the that's question. Technically minded answer uh, so right and and so you just really need to understand or try to read through the lines to what the real context of where they're coming from is it's not easy to do but uh definitely worth the effort but let's go to the first question yeah we got some great um, questions here. so um and cindy the first question is uh, that's the person running this for us by the way um uh, just scrolled off the screen so i'm going to read the second one so um, how do you explain to clients the massive shakeups from the last Google update, despite doing everything correctly, the white hat way? Yeah. Uh, so I think that this happens. I, I don't actually know which shakeup this person's referring to. You know, there was a big shakeup in July. There was a big shakeup in May. There was a big shakeup in September, and another one in October, late October. Um, my guess maybe is that the, uh, this question is about the the uh, most recent one. But in, in any of these cases, the, uh, the good news is, I don't know if you've seen these charts, right? But a lot of the times, Google will make a big change. Uh, some people will lose rankings. Some people will gain rankings. And then over time, that'll balance back out again, right? So in the next shakeup or in the correction to a shakeup, oftentimes someone will, uh, will benefit. The other thing I'd say is that um, doing things the correct white hat way is not a winning tactic anymore. It is just table stakes. In order to, to win, you have to be doing things vastly better than anyone in your field, right? So if you, if, if you tell me, hey, I haven't done any bad link building, I haven't done any sketchy content stuff, I've done no sketchy on-site stuff, 
why am I not ranking better? I would say those things do not help you rank better than your competition. They only make sure that you don't get penalized. Um, right. And, right. and these algorithmic shakeups are not about penalization as much anymore. Uh, certainly not large scale since you know the days of Penguin and that sort of thing. Mostly what we're seeing now is shakeups based on who's solving the searcher's problem better than anyone else. I, I couldn't agree more. And this aligns so well with uh, what advice I give people and things that I say in presentations. I mean, your job is to uh, just give it a simple phrase, be elite, be the best at something. It doesn't have to be your entire market space, by the way. So if you're in a market where there's three you know, giant corporations and you're a mid-tier size player and you're trying to gain some market share, take one slice of your market space and go deeper and further and more thorough in how you address that piece and be the best at that piece of it. Short of doing this, as Marin says, the, the white hat SEO thing is just table stakes. It isn't going to get you there. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. So the another, second question. question. Oh. oh, our first question here was, uh, are these ranking factors and inputs universal or does Google use some only in certain cases? And this is a, this is an amazing question because we uh, one of the things that I asked in the survey was, do you believe Google has a universal set of inputs or that they have some subset where they um, apply different factors differently or do you think that they apply them differently to every different query? And SEOs gave their opinion on that and by and large, most folks believe that there is uh, some bifurcation, right? That, uh, that essentially uh, you have variance in how Google weights the algorithmic inputs based on the type of search. And you can see the most uh, e extreme example that we showed today was the AMP results, where yes. yeah. in news, AMP is not only a ranking factor, it's a requirement. Um, it is the ranking factor, right? Either you have it and you're allowed in, or you don't have it and you can't get in at all. Uh, and that is true in, I think, many spaces, not as extreme as, as AMP in news, but, but true in many cases. So great question there. Yeah, no, I believe there's a pretty significant uh, uh, variance in types of results and, and kinds of behavior. You can actually see this in a very simple way. Um, you could use a set of tactics that works really well for one business, and you turn around and do exactly the same thing for another business in another market, and you get pretty different impact. Yeah. Uh, so there's definitely, you know, uh, different uh, nuance there. So the third question, Ran, was um, does the balance of no follow and follow links in your external links matter? Uh, if you ask me personally, the answer is mostly no, with one exception, which is if all of your external links are no followed, if you if you blanket no follow everything, uh, I think that that is going to have a negative impact on you. Whether it's a, a ranking factor, I can't say for certain, but I have seen it be negatively correlated with performance and rankings. And that could very well be from that ecosystem participation. It could be that Google looks at it and cares about it. Uh, the only site that historically has performed really, really well with blanket no follows was Wikipedia. And they've actually done significantly worse in the last four or five years in Google's rankings than they did for the first 15 years of Google's life. Yeah, and I think, you know, most users aren't going to notice no follow versus follow for sure. Uh, so they won't, won't be aware. The users who link, which matter a lot, they will notice. Yeah, they will notice. I agree with you. Uh, but from the point of view of the deeper ecosystem uh, and what was I willing to have someone leave my site and go to another site, which is kind of a big deal uh, when you think about the value of an external link from that perspective, uh, that piece is, is cleanly passed through. So our next question, the most surprising belief or opinion, what did you think? Um, Okay, so that, uh, if you go to the actual chart, you can you can Google uh, you know SparkTor ranking factors or Google ranking factors 2019, and you, you you'll find it. Um, one of the things that I found uh, fascinating was the relative disagreement, right? So the disagreement levels. Um, there were some things where people very much agreed. So so the uh, standard deviation, right, was quite low. For example. People, almost all SEOs believe that relevance of overall page content, uh, that's super important. 
And so the, the uh, standard deviation on that was super low. Uh, keyword in the domain name is one of the ones that I found m maybe most, I don't know, surprising, but uh, that was the most disagreed upon ranking factor. There is still a, a cogent, a strong cogent of search marketers who think that having the keyword in your domain name, not your URL, but your domain name uh, is a big, important ranking factor, and then a bunch who don't. And it's kind of, you know, where, whereas bell curve is their standard distribution, this is like uh, two towers on either side, right? A bunch <laughs> of zeros and a bunch of fours. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, th I thought that was a fascinating one, too. And, I mean, there were so many, though, and we actually had some of them in here where the, the distribution was... Uh, uh, really pretty even, you know, this sort of flattish shape. Uh, yeah. So just like you said earlier, it just reminds us just how much disagreement there is out there. And and frankly, and I'm not saying that was the case in these particular questions, there's still so much disinformation about SEO out there and sure. varying opinions with things that aren't, uh, there really isn't any real data to support them. Uh, so just know that you got to be careful out there when you're, uh, pick the people who you're reading for SEO information and advice. Yeah, carefully. one of the ones. The the only other one I was going to bring up is this this stuck in the middle ranking factor uh, that I thought should have been near the top, which is uh, freshness and recency of publication. Yep. Which personally I've seen in almost every space have a lot of positive impact, and so I was surprised to see that one stuck in the middle. I think that might be an underrated factor, and potentially therefore a competitive advantage for those of you seeking one of those. Yes, indeed. So anyway, we're at the end of our time, Rand. Uh, awesome. I love always. joining you for these things. So much fun. Uh, folks out there, if you have questions for us, you can shoot them over to uh, to me at Randfish on Twitter. Uh, and, and Eric, you're at Eric Engie now on Twitter? Or no, at Stone Temple still. At Stone Temple on Twitter. Okay, great. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So thank you, everybody. Hope you uh, enjoyed the show. And as Rand says, feel free to shoot questions over. We're always happy to take them on. All awesome. right, I know.